All right. And, and this guy, this guy was, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, this, this level, haha, you messed up your speech. Shut up, crazy hand. But anyway, this level is like the only one that has uh, a song that plays in a different level. Yeah, that's right. I guess, would they run out of memory or what's go what was going on there? Do you know? Well, no, they, it could be memory or it could just be that they couldn't think of anything else so they threw it together. It, it, songs that replayed were not uncommon back in those days, so, you know, people wouldn't really think very much of it. In fact, the fact that there, there was only one reused song is actually pretty remarkable. And you, we were, me, me and Crazy Hand reviewed Alien Syndrome. Well, that's a game where the same song was used throughout the game. Oh. And, you know, it didn't bother me either when I was a kid. I was just thinking, whoa, cool, you know, it's level one music. For old time's sake, I guess? I'm, I don't know. Not old time's sake, but, you know, the, going back to the first level. Yeah. But, um, do you know, Do you know in Australia, this game wasn't even called Contra? Really? Not surprised. Called I mean, Pro they, are called, they are called different things in different countries. Pro yeah. Probotector. Oh, well. Wow. Sounds like some kind of thing you do in an airport, isn't it? Yeah. Well, when you get abducted by aliens. <laughs> right. Now, you know, so, you know, the barrier lasts like, I think, three to five times as long as it does in Super C, and it's a lot more common. Yeah. I hate these hands. It, it's 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 next to useless in Super C. Right. Especially that one level. I think it was level three. The I don't know what it's called. There's there's one enemy it it, it might protect you against, but I think that's it. And I know what you're talking about, the one in the Earthquake Zone. Yeah, the Earthquake Zone, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wait a minute, this ain't a Sega game. What are you doing this, in this review, Charlie? Well, you know, <laughs> good friends, you gotta stick together. Uh, that's right. Whether or not it's for the sake of Sega. But that, see, that, that's Charlie's excuse, people. Uh, Charlie... Sega, not Sega, by the way, guys. It's Sega. We are currently performing site maintenance. Please be patient. We'll be back shortly. Uh, huh. That was my boy. YouTube and then maintenance. <laughs> and the upcoming boss of this level is another, I don't know, computer or whatever. Not computers in this game. Anyway, pretty easy boss, as you can see, especially in two player or, or in one player. If you had the spread gun, just shoot the freaking light, that little glowing, flashy thing at the door, and then it's over. And then you're at stage eight, aliens liar or layer, and uh, liar. <laughs> Are you calling me a liar? Um, Are you calling me a liar? No, I'm calling you a liar. <laughs> oh, Mr. Body Armor. Swindon, Super C, me and Swindon could not figure out what that stood for. He said it stands for Brave. <laughs> Super Contra. And, um... When I first saw this... Speaking of which, there is a sequel that came out on the Saturn as well. Oh. Called Legacy Contra War. 2? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, that was that was that was the one that came out on the NES, Contra 2. This is no, no, I, I know what you're talking about. It's good Super C, but I'm just saying, well, if there was a direct sequel to Contra, you know, I'm just guessing Contra 2 or something. I don't know. But Contra 3 was the Alien Wars for Super Nintendo. Yeah. And again, this is the final stage. That mini boss we fought, I thought it was the the boss of the game when I first saw that boss, or you know, that mini boss in the magazine. That's before I ever got to this level when I was a kid. I was like, oh, it's Red Falcon. Nope, it's just a mini boss. It does, it does kind of look red in all fairness. Yeah, so you know, common sense. Oh, Red Falcon, you know. <laughs> but nope, um, Red Falcon or his heart is coming up here. You gotta shoot his heart. Well, actually, maybe it is Red Falcon because you think about it, you fight that, you fight the face, and then you go in and kill the heart. Oh yeah, I never thought of that. Maybe that is it. It's the, you know, he has a lot of heart in this game. Uh -huh. And it's it's all you gotta go after the heart of the matter. Yeah, all right, so that pretty much wraps it up, doesn't it, guys? Well, the ending isn't that great, but it's the satis the satisfaction of beating the game when you're a kid, and you get this message: Congratulations, you destroyed the vile Red Falcon and saved the universe. Consider yourself for here. Congratulations! And the ending is much better than Super C's ending. And at least you don't. Well, Super get... C, what, what? You call that an ending? <laughs> no, I guess not. Um, and but but you know what? Super C's ending is not the worst in the world. 
I mean, Captain Skullhawk's ending. Have you seen that ending? No, but I mean, I've I've seen I've seen some endings where uh, where they where it ended tragically. I mean, that that would be worse than no ending at all, I suppose. Well, no, because at least you get some sort of ending uh, with that. Fuck that. Cap Captain Skullhawk. I mean, the ending it says game over. Isn't oh, that... and then there's the <laughs> Ghostbusters game that just says um, congratulations. Has all these spelling mistakes, yeah. <laughs> yeah and the that... famous Double Dragon ending that has the names spelt wrong. Jimmy and Jimmy. No, that's the opening. Sorry, that was the opening of Double Dragon Three, actually. But yeah, I know what you're talking about with the Ghostbusters thing. Uh, that's actually a good ending because it's so bad it's good. <laughs> you know, huh. The Skullhawk and it says game over. <laughs> Isn't that the string you're supposed to see when you lose the game? But anyway, you guys, this game, um, as we give our closing thoughts here on the game, um, Contra, definitely an old-time favorite. Contra's definitely a, a video game Hall of Famer, if there is a video game Hall of Fame. Um, and Konami, you know, one of the greatest companies of all time, uh, video game companies of all time created it. This game has... Your baby. And this game has good graphics, good music, good controls, and I can't really think of anything bad about it, really, to be honest with you, so... Yeah, and graphics are 8-bit, dude. Who cares about graphics? It's gameplay it matters. Oh, no, it, it was evolutionary. I mean, they were pushing, you know, towards what happened in the Mode 7 in, in on the Super Nintendo as well. They were trying to show us how they can lead forward through a tunnel and stuff like that. You know, that yeah. was pretty... Rev yeah, they, they, old Nintendo. yeah, they made good use of that. But, yeah, gameplay is more important. But at the same time, I, I know it's Nintendo 8-bit, but... Graphics are somewhat of a major factor in video games as well, back then, even back then. Um, my score in this game, I, I really have to give it a 10. Uh, Charlie? An 8, because it didn't come out in the Sega. If it came out of the Sega, I'd give it a 10. <laughs> right. It didn't come out of the Master System, so it loses two points. There's a bit of discrimination there, but, you know, you got to be, don't you? you got to be unbiased. Now, um, yeah, this, this is strictly uh, Nintendo. Great game, great game. Yeah, um, Master Hand, Crazy Hand? Well, I would give it pretty close to a 9, uh, but Crazy Hand has his uh, things about it. Well, first of all, the fireball gun just is all screwy, and then it has all these weird-looking things, and then those panel covers in level 4 are annoying, so I would give it a 7. It's good, but it still pisses me off. Are you done, they Crazy stole Hand? They face from the Transformers, too, didn't they? Are, 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 you, are you done complaining, Crazy Hand? What's that supposed to mean? <sighs> anyway, oh, I'd say right, it, it, it overhaul had great gameplay. But the, the, the best thing is that it had two players simultaneous. That was yeah, actually cool. pretty revolutionary for the time. Two player tended to be turn-based. And this was a very nice oh, yeah. change of pace. Yeah, it's one of those games where... Um, you knew somebody that had it, and the only reason why you wanted to go over there to their house was to play that game. You didn't really care about them personally. I remember as a kid how much it sucks sitting around waiting for your turn, you know, especially when one guy you were playing with is really good at the game. You end up sitting there for 20 minutes just to have five second go, you know? Yeah, so and good. It's, it's one of the, um, you know, and people at our age, you know, we, we go back and when we're about maybe eight or nine years old and... It's a great nostalgia factor. You know, this game is a great nostalgia trip. Right um, and it, it's just one of the great class, classics of all time. So, uh, all right, guys, uh, that is it for our review. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Ron Moore. Thanks for having me on, Ron. No problem. Uh, Charlie, Master Hand, Crazy Hand, thanks a lot for joining us, and you guys take care. Bye.